The climate change is a common problem in Southeast Asian countries. What we are lacking is we don't have the common vision. The leadership program like this can contribute to develop a common vision in this region. We cannot deal with the climate is individually or just a, a country alone. It, it's it's require a very good network. It's require a inter inter country inter cross cross country uh, cross culture because uh, uh, climate is something that global. It is not recognized a boundary of administration, political boundary, but we have to put together our idea, our willingness, our dedication to do something for people. So I think like the challenges we're facing in climate change, they're complex and we face a high level of uncertainty. I think the question is here, so how can we manage and nourish leaders that make change happen. So what we're trying to address here is uh, what kind of leaders and leadership would we need to make transformations happen. Transformations happen needed for addressing, finding innovative and new, new solutions uh, to problems of climate change. Leadership is about imagining a future and taking actions today. So we have basically two processes. One is about visioning, collective visioning co-creating a vision. The second is about scenario thinking, scenario planning. Scenario thinking is about uh, identifying driving factors and then to agree together what are the trends and what are the driving forces and how will the future look in 20-30 years if we don't change anything. And if we change things, what will be the other scenario? The Climate Leadership Program applies the methodology of GIZ's Academy for International Cooperation. We call our approach Leadership for Global Responsibility. Its cornerstones are collective leadership, transformative leadership and innovative action. But most important, it is a dynamic leadership approach that we constantly co-construct with our partners and participants. In this climate leadership program, there are three important things. One is to reflect about the past, to imagine the future, but also to sense the field. Now we are going to the field to have interactions, dialogue with the people from your community and to reflect about the challenges and the solutions and what they are doing in facing climate related challenges. So this interaction with the different stakeholders, I would say that is one of the most important aspects of leaders to be in direct contact, not only to process secondhand information. Climate Leadership Program is very important for Southeast Asia countries because Southeast Asia is one of the most vulnerable countries. The impact of climate change will be very serious in this region. So through this Climate Leadership Program, we're trying to develop a collaboration, collective action among the member countries, not within one sector, but also multi-sectoral. We bring business people, NGOs, academicians, government, how we can create together an innovative action that can bring Asian countries to be more resilient to face the problem of climate change. I think a lot of innovative transformative solutions, they can come from Indonesia, from Southeast Asia. Just take an example, this Trihita Karana concept from Bali. That means if you do, if you do take any kind of action, try to pay respect to spiritual powers, but also respect to human beings, but also respect nature. To be in balance, balance with human beings and nature, and it can provide a lot of inspiration to deal with the climate changes. The global challenge is actually um, changing perspective, mindsets. Probably people from the from the north is too adaptive of the way how people seeing them as multi-power, supremacy, and everything. But they they don't know that people in the south is actually getting more advanced in this, and um, they have. 
you know, uh, they have certain capabilities that are never been recognized, but now they have to understand that people from the North must know we people in the South are actually experts of our own environment, and you have to listen for, um, to our um, um, opinions. But one thing really stick in my mind is the power of now, the power of doing in the present. Because in the past, or we, we can call it whatsoever, we can call it history or whatsoever, actually we can learn from it. But most of, m most of it, we are just regretting about the past. And but now it is our time to take action.